Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Here's a video I've wanted to do for a while and it was brought to my attention again reading over some posts. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the things I sort of have become known for in uh, some, a lot of my Helix videos, or all of my Helix videos pretty much, uh, my templates and whatnot, it's always putting uh, an LA-2A uh, compressor, the LA Studio Comp compressor at the end of my chain after the effects, after everything. And I've explained this a million times before, uh, that I use it in a very subtle way there, um, not for some crazy overt amount of compression. Um, and that I, it's almost used kind of in the same way a mastering engineer would use uh, compression. Very subtle, just as a little bit of glue to kind of glue all the elements of the tone together. Okay, so. Um, the funny thing is, is no matter how many times I state that, you know, that's how I like to work. It's my opinion about it. There's always somebody who has to come out and say, you know, oh, you should never put the compressor after, you know, time-based effects, delays and reverbs, you know, and the, the virtual finger wag comes out. Um, and, you know, there, there is some truth to that in certain circumstances. And again, just to qualify, like I always do, this is my opinion and my way of working. I've had hundreds and hundreds, if not more people, uh, write me and tell me that putting the compressor at the end just makes their presets come to life and they love it. So, you know, for me, that's it. Proof is in the pudding. Now, that doesn't mean that any, everybody has to do it or anybody has to do it. And some people might not like it. And that's perfectly fine. There's so many ways to work and nobody's wrong and nobody's right. And I'll never state that, you know, I'm right and that's the only way to do things. But let's look at that. Let's look at this idea of how does the compressor sound after the effects and before the effects. Now, let me just give a, a little lowdown on this. There are times, uh, and just recently I did a preset, um, where I didn't want the compressor after the effects. And there's good reason for it. Um, sometimes, there could be a couple of reasons. Um, sometimes maybe I want to use more than a normal amount of, or a small amount of compression. Maybe I really want to squash a tone. Well, I'm not going to put that type of compression where I'm really squashing a tone uh, after the time-based effects because I don't want that same kind of squash applied to my delays and my reverbs. The other possibility would be that I'm using a very large amount of effects, right? Where maybe I, I want a very washed out reverb sound or a very heavy delay. I'm going to have to take this on a case-by-case -case basis. So there's no right or wrong. You know, some of the most amazing guitar tones over time have been created by, you know, breaking, quote unquote, breaking the so-called rules. You know, like there's a rule book or something, right? Um, you know, what's the rumor that, you know, guitar distortion, you know, really kind of came to life with uh, somebody playing through a, a torn speaker, you know, with a torn speaker cone, right? And going, oh, wait, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, uh, off we go with sort of, uh, looking for different types of distortion, you know, characteristics to, to add to our, to our guitar tones. And here we are today with many possibilities, right? So I figured, you know what, let's dive in and do a little test with this. We'll try to keep it as scientific as possible and see um, in the scenario that I usually use it, because I don't have time to go through a million different scenarios here, how does it affect the tone, whether the uh, compressor is before or after the effects. And you can use your own ears. Now I would recommend listening to this on a good set of headphones or a good set of speakers, a good monitoring solution, simply for the fact that there's going to be some pretty subtle things here. And I think some folks might even be surprised how subtle the compression at the end of the preset chain actually is. So let's go over to HX Edit. What I've done here is I've just set up a little, this is my template. This is a template I pull up and start almost all my presets off of, unless it's something very different. Um, so, uh, what I've done is I've pulled up my, my template, which has my LA-2A with the typical settings at the end, uh, EQ that only has low and high cuts on it, um, my standard room verb, standard delay at the settings that I normally use, unless I change them for some other reason, um, and then my little high and low shelf EQ which, with subtle changes, all the frequencies below 650 hertz cut back 2 dB, and all the frequencies... Um, above two kilohertz boosted by 2 dB. Okay, and I've just thrown on a placator dirty with these settings, not important, that's not what this is really about. Um, and a 412 greenback 25 with a 160 ribbon mic three and a half inches back. So that's what we're hearing and that sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, nice 
nice tone. Great, that placator is an awesome amp model. The reason I chose a distorted sound with this is because a lot of folks also say, oh, we don't even need compression on distorted tones. It's simply for clean tones, right? That's another one I've had a lot. And it, there, again, there is some truth to it because a distorted tone has a certain natural compression to it. So again, I don't disagree, but that's kind of going against the, the purpose of what I'm using the compressor for, which is just a subtle glue, just a little subtle glue and to add a little bit of maybe squishiness to the tone that isn't already there, which we'll hear in a minute. Now, the other thing about making a blanket statement like, you know, compressors should never go after such and such or here or there, is that then we are kind of making a blanket statement that all compression is equal. Now, something like the deluxe compressor in, that we have in the Helix has all sorts of different controls, right? We have threshold, we have attack, we have release, we have, um, ratio we have you know all of these are going to affect it so we can set a compressor to be very subtle and barely be acting on the on the tone or we can set it to be very heavy-handed and really alter the tone in a very dramatic way so to just say compressors should never go after whatever what compressor you know how's that compressor set so it's kind of a not a real accurate comment to make because there's too many other variables how are our effects set how are or how is our compressor set, you know? So there's so many variables to it. So let's take a look here at what I do have. I have my typical settings on my uh, LA Studio Comp compressor. Now what you're gonna notice if I turn this off, here's the tone. If I turn it on, now you notice we got a boost in gain out of it, a volume jump. That's no good for right now. If I was just not gonna do a comparison, then that's fine. And you say, well, our level is set at zero. Yes, but I usually have the gain set at five. So that's actually giving a little bit, the, the, the compressor's giving a little bit of an output boost as well. So what I'm going to do is pull this back until we can get this sort of at unity gain, right? So that if this is turned off or on, it's gonna be in the same volume, okay? So here we go. I've pulled that back to four and a half. Very close, let's just go back by pulling. I would say that's very close. Now, let's listen to the difference between uh, the effect. Oh, let, let's do this. I'm gonna set up a snapshot and call this no comp. And then I'll set up snapshot two and name it comp. And I'll turn that on. So now when I switch between snapshot one, you'll see the compressor goes off. <laughs> Okay, do you hear how subtle that is? There is a difference, very, very tiny difference, but let's listen again, no compressor. Again, no compressor, watch when I switch up here to the different snapshots. Do you hear that very subtle glue? I feel it in my playing, but it's extremely subtle, okay? That's what I like to put at the end, really. Um, now, even if I did put this up to where I normally have it at five, I'm getting a little volume jump, but it's really not affecting the tone much. It might add a slight bit of nonlinear distortion characteristics modeled into that. <laughs> Let's go, they'll bring that back to where I had it at 4.4. Okay, well, let's do this now. Let's set up a third snapshot. All I'm going to do is copy uh, this, paste it over here, and it doesn't, I'll just put it right there, right before the, uh, the time-based effects, the delay and the reverb. And I'll go to third snapshot, and I will call this um, pre comp okay and actually I'll go back to this one and call it 
post comp, meaning the uh, compressor is post effects for this one. And I'll turn this off in that. Go back to no comp, make sure those are both off, which they are. Post comp, this one's on, this one's off. And pre comp, this one's needs to be off, this one needs to be on. Let's see the difference in volume, if there is any, between snapshots three and one. So here's one with no compression. I'm almost hearing the slightest little boost there. Let's try that. Good, okay. So now that seems to be pretty level as far as the uh, compression or the, um, the level goes between them. So our ears are going to hear what the compressor is doing now and not just hearing a volume booster dip that will skew what we think the sound is like. Okay, so hopefully you can hear, you're listening, don't listen on a tablet or a phone, please. You won't hear these subtle differences. And I hope your ear is able to pick out on the subtle, subtle compression. Again, let's just go with the post comp and the no comp. So here's no comp. <laughs> So in this one with the post comp, right? Making sure that this is still off. I wanna make sure that nothing gets triggered here uh, accidentally to, to skew the results in any way. No, we're good. So what you're hearing with the post comp is the compression applied to everything like I usually do it. So the little bit of delay and the little bit of reverb that I have are also being compressed to whatever degree that compressor is doing, which is not a lot, it's very subtle, right? Now, um, when I switch to pre-comp, then it's not affecting that, it's only affecting, the compression is only affecting what's coming out of the amp. Some folks like to do it this way, and that's fine. Again, don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to show here is that I don't think it's as big a difference as some folks make it out to be when using the typical settings that I use, okay? And, and then we can all make up our own mind. Maybe some people will truly just like it before the effects and please put it there. That's what's so beautiful about this. I copy and pasted that or I could have dragged that right before the time-based effects in about a second and the problem solved, right? If it is a problem, right? So let's compare this. Let's listen through and I'll play some with uh, no comp. Um, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do actually? Let's even do this. Let's add a looper. Foot switch one is now, actually let's do this. Let's make it foot switch, uh, oops, no, not that one. Seven, okay, just easier for me to access it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna play just a little riff, maybe something that actually allows that delay to, to ring out as well. Um, and then we'll switch between. And if you notice, I put the, the looper before everything so that it's feeding into it like my guitar would, right? So, and let's do this. Okay, so I have this little loop here now. I can put my guitar down. And what I'm gonna do now, that's gonna allow us to play through the exact same, in a, in a much more scientific manner, there's no performance difference, the exact same riff where you can hear what's happening to the delays and the reverbs when I do that stop, and then a little more playing where I just continue through more. Um, and I'll switch between the three snapshots as that is happening, as that riff is being played. Uh, sorry for the cheesy riff, by the way. Um, and we can hear, listen for the difference between no compressor, the compressor after the effects, where it could possibly be doing something to our time-based effects, which is what everybody that has complained about this or says they don't agree with it is worried about. 
and then we'll listen to it before, and you tell me what you think. Let's listen through. I'm gonna get the loop going, and we're going to start with no comp, no compressor. Okay, so here's the loop. And please watch at the top when I switch uh, snapshots up here, you'll be able to hear it, or see when I switch, okay? So I'll go no comp to it with post comp like I would normally do it. Sorry to go on so long with that, but I really wanted you to get to hear a difference between hearing no comp and then the post and the pre-comp side by side to really hear what the difference is. So the takeaways here are this, um, from no compressor to the post compressor settings that are a placement that I normally use, the difference is subtle at best, right? Something else to keep in mind, if I came into my channel volume on my amp, say I found the preset was too loud and I backed this off, every volume change I make before the compressor is going to affect how much compression. So I could actually back this channel volume off to the point where I'm not even getting anything out of the compressor, no compression. Or vice versa, if I was low to begin with and boosted it up, I'm gonna actually raise the amount of compression I get. So you gotta be careful about that. That's why a lot of times if I'm going to boost the volume of a preset, uh, and I don't want it to affect my tonality as far as compression and anything else. I go to the output block here and boost it here after all the effects, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. But I think the takeaway is that those settings are extremely subtle, right? Did you hear a huge difference between having it after the effects or before the effects? Honestly, I would have to sit down and do a blind ABX test between them to really determine it because I know that confirmation bias is an extremely powerful thing. And if I, you know, if I say that, oh, I prefer it after the effects and somebody else says I prefer it before and we know what we're hearing, oftentimes we're going to lean just towards whatever we already have convinced ourselves to believe is correct. And that's what they call confirmation bias, right? Our bias is based off of this confirmation we need that we were right in the beginning, we were correct. But it doesn't matter who you are, we can be fooled by this. So really a blind ABX test is the only way to get away with that. And I, I don't know if I would be able to really tell the difference with it before or after. I don't know, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. 
it doesn't matter really to me. Uh, things are so subtle here that I sort of feel like, you know what, I like it at the end just because if it is a fake, it's just gluing everything together and I'm fine with that. Now, if I'm doing a preset and I hear that something is being kind of messed up because it's at the end, by all means, I will move it. Like I said before, if I'm doing something with a huge reverb or big delays or something along those lines, then yeah, it's likely I don't want it at the end. Or maybe I do, it depends. Use your ears. Get away from this idea that because you read in a recording book somewhere that compression should never go after time-based effects, that it can't possibly be done with good effect. And again, maybe it shouldn't be there, right? But again, it comes down to using our ears. And the beautiful thing about the Helix is we can run these tests very effortlessly and sort of debunk myths that particular situations are right or wrong, which I never like to use because it comes down to what the final results are. I use these settings in all my presets, all my videos, pretty much, like I said, except for a, a few odd occasions. And it's always served me quite well. And uh, it gives me that sort of finished polished sound where I don't feel like I have to go outside of the Helix later in the mix and add some compression to the guitars to glue it together or get it to sit in the mix. It's already there, it's done, you know. But again, we have to decide for ourselves and I'll never say anybody's right or wrong. Um, you make up your own mind. And I hope this kind of helped us to sort of determine whether or not uh, we like the compression or where we want to put the compression. But it's been such a topic that comes up every now and then that people ask. I thought, you know what, let's do a dedicated video to it and just sort of see uh, what the actual reality is. And obviously I'm just using this, the, the sort of standard stock settings uh, in my template. I didn't want to go outside of that. So fairly subtle delay, very subtle room reverb. When I put that room reverb there, it's not so much for effect in giving this sort of huge reverb sound, it's more just to give it the sound of being recorded in a room as it would be when we record a microphone. I've said that with a microphone and an amp, I've sort of said that before. Now there's other tones where maybe if we put more reverb, like I said, the compressor, you know, maybe won't be good or maybe we need less of it or whatever, you know, or maybe we just move it before the reverb, it's that simple, you know. So do whatever you feel you need to and uh, go from there. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that wasn't a waste of a video, but it was just a topic that's been brought up so often that I thought it might be a good thing to just discuss. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video, share it if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A lot more content coming up. Uh, I have some new stuff up on Marketplace if you wanna go grab a preset or two. Helps to support me doing what I do uh, with all of these videos as well. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in <clears throat> and I'll be back very, very soon. Ciao for now.